I tell you, when my children have dared to take me lightly, the first reaction that I have, because I have the fear of God in me, is, Lord, have mercy on my children because they do not know what they do. See, so this is exactly what Yeshua cried out when he was being crucified at the cross on the tree of Calvary. And when the people, the Roman centurions, were nailing him to the cross, and the, uh, some, of, some of the Jewish uh, religious leaders were saying, crucify him. What Yeshua, he didn't say, God judge them. He said, oh, Abba, have mercy on them because they do not know what they do. They didn't know what they were doing. And so Yeshua asked for mercy. And when my kids go ahead and disrespect me at times, which most kids do at times, and especially in this generation, you've got to really have a lot of spiritual authority because today the kids are taught to be totally violently disrespectful to their parents, to their teachers, and to all authorities. The spirit of this age is a spirit of disrespect and disobedience to elders. I mean, it comes to a point where eld elderly people, for example, are disregarded as if they were nothing. While in the Hebrew biblical culture, your elders are the most important people. Today, in this, during this generation, the young people are more important than the elders, but that's upside down. Because in biblical culture, the elders are actually the ones that carry the weight of influence and the weight of importance because they need to disciple a coming generation. And this coming generation is to respect them. If not, they will die. I'm going to tell you that because of various reasons, I've had the privilege of ministering inside of psychiatric hospitals. I have um, moved throughout all the different departments of the psychiatric hospitals. Sometimes I've emptied some beds in there. Praise the living God. The circumstances that took me there were not good because it was somebody very dear to me that was hospitalized. And for many years, I kept on visiting and going, and at the same time exercising the gifts of the Spirit and the love of the Messiah to bless, to pray, and to help the people inside. And I've been able to interview many of the youngsters because the, the psychiatric hospitals are filled with young people that are absolutely deranged, schizophrenic, paranoid, clinically depressed manic depressive, dyslexic, whatever, you just name it. And most of the people inside of the hospitals are actually young people, as young as eight years old, I've seen. And as I've been um, ministering inside of these hospitals, I, I, I got to interview some of them, a lot of them. And I came to the conclusion that the common denominator of every one of those kids was that they hated their parents. Hating their parents caused them to lose their mind. Because hating their parents breaks these commandments where God promises a long and healthy life upon the earth. Many of them end up committing suicide. Some of my most distressful times was when uh, that person that I loved so much that was in the hospital would call me and say, you know so-and-so that you met committed suicide. I'll tell you, it would break my heart. Because as I was there, I was trying to be a witness for Messiah and somehow rescue a few of them. But the key issue for all of them was forgiveness to parents and respecting the parents, though they are super imperfect. I have no doubt that the issue of the parents is not only the fault of the children, because many times the parents are those that basically have not given a good example. But nevertheless, God gave this commandment in spite of the imperfection of parents. In other words, a child, a son, a daughter that will decide to respect the parents in spite of their condition will be blessed anyways. Will have a long life anyways. Will have a blessed and prosperous life anyways. I promise you because that is God's word. Now everything that's connected with Abraham 
is about parenthood. Israel is the parent of the nations. Israel, the mother of the church. And so when we disrespect Israel, when we actually hate Israel, when we don't bless Israel, it's exactly taken in the eyes of God as dishonoring and disrespecting parents. Now, what do you do with parents? Parents are supposed to teach you something, and that's instruction. And we're going to talk in another chapter, another episode of Revival Cry about this issue of what can Israel teach the nations? What is Israel supposed to instruct the nations? Now, just to let you know, by now, Israel has brought to the nations the Bible, the entire Holy Scriptures, and, of course, the Messiah. So Israel has really already has done its job, even if Israel right now is in a condition that may not be holy, not all of us, but lots of us, Maybe many of us have not yet recognized the Messiah, and yet I'll tell you that Israel has already done its job, and it's been apparent to the nations by bringing the scriptures and the Messiah, the key of Abraham that opens for revival or closes revival. I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you. And in you, Israel, all the families of the earth will be blessed. I would like to thank you for considering to partner with us for the revival of Israel and the revival of this city, the city of Eilat on the Red Sea. I would also like to thank you for keeping us on the air so that we can keep on preaching the message that can impact your lives and the life of your nations. Beloved, the Bible comes alive in Israel. There is no other country in the world where a Christian and a believer in Messiah can experience the fullness of Elohim, the fullness of the Creator God, the God of Israel. You come to Jerusalem and you imagine Yeshua landing on the Mount of Olives upon His return. You come with me to the Temple Mount and you can see Him ruling all over the nations. You come with me to the Sea of Galilee and all of a sudden all the, all the stories of the miracles and the opening of the blind eyes and the healing of the sick and the feeding of the multitude comes alive. You come with me to the Jordan River and get rededicated in the same river that Yeshua was baptized. Come with us to the Red Sea and you can imagine in a lot at the Red Sea, the opening of the Red Sea when Moses he brought the people of Israel through dry land. And you can imagine also King Solomon meeting the beautiful Queen of Shiva and come with us to the Dead Sea, my goodness. Oh, if you want to get relaxed, you take that Bible and float on those waters and breathe that air and imagine King David writing the Psalms in the area of the desert of Judea and the judgment on Sodoma and Gomorrah. There is absolutely no other place in the whole world like Israel. Do not miss the next tour of Kadesh Map Ministries to Israel. Israel.